Thank you, Representative Jackson. At this time, we will officially call to order the joint meeting of the Senate Reapportionment and Redistricting Committee and House Legislative and Congressional Reapportionment Committees. First of all, I would like to thank all of the legislators that we have here. We have representatives and senators who have come from every corner of the state, uh, including the southernmost point. So thank you for being here. We also have committee members and legislators who are attending virtually. They're, they're watching us on live stream now. So thank you all um, for being here. And thank you all, the members of the public, for being here and for being a part of this process. It's heartening to see that we have so much uh, participation from the members of the public. Um, we want to hear from all of you, and that's what this portion of our redistricting process is about. This is the fifth hearing out of 11 public hearings that we will hold across the state. And we are traveling to major cities and in all the different areas of the state. We also are holding the virtual meetings for those who can't attend in person. Um, we have had a lot of um, interest in speaking, and as you know, uh, some of you have signed up out front to speak. We are adjusting the speaking time to allow the maximum amount of time possible within our hearing time allotted. And for this meeting, it looks like we're going to be able to allow everyone four minutes to speak. You don't have to take the whole four minutes, um, but we are we're guaranteeing everyone at least two minutes of all of our meetings. Um, but we are um, we have uh, sign up submission that will give us a little bit more time here. We have six more of these public hearings coming up, uh, some in person and some virtual. We will be holding uh, another meeting just like this one tomorrow night in Augusta. And then at the end of this month, we will be traveling to the south part of our state, and we will have hearings in Brunswick, and then Albany, and then we'll be working our way up through the midsection to Columbus and Macon. We will have also at least one more virtual hearing. And at these hearings, we'll hear what people um, have to say from their communities, your community, because you know it best. Um, and uh, we, we want to hear from all of you. For those of you who cannot or are not comfortable speaking in public like this, we will also be collecting written comments. And that is actually up and live right now on the House and Senate uh, websites. There's a banner at the top. If you click on that banner, it'll take you to a screen where you can submit written testimony. Our goal is to ensure that every comment that we get goes to a central location so that we can then access it and use it when we start working on, on drawing these maps. Our email addresses, our email boxes get full with constituent issues and, and other issues, and it's not as likely, or it's more likely to, to not be caught there, so we're trying to send it all to a central location. We have also made some changes to the processes to ensure that we collect all of the useful information. Members of the General Assembly all received guidance from outside counsel about the importance of preserving records and information. So we have been making some adjustments to our email and voicemail systems to ensure that everything that we receive from the public is being captured and retained, not destroyed. So all of that is with the goal of ensuring that we get everyone's input into this process. Um, I failed to introduce myself at the beginning. My name is Bonnie Rich. I am the chairman of the House Redistricting Committee, and I am chairing this meeting here with my colleague, Senator Kennedy, who is the chairman of the Senate Redistricting Committee. And with that, I will turn it over to him. Thank you, Chairman Rich. Good afternoon. I'll walk off a bit better. Yeah. All right. Now we're going to go away. Thank you. I am Chairman Rich. I'm John F. Kennedy from Maine. I represent the 18th district of the Georgia Senate, so I've got six counties in middle Georgia around the Bacon area. But for today's purposes, uh, what brings me here is I chair the House, excuse me, the Senate Redistricting Senate Redistricting Committee. Yeah, no, no, no. Got my hands full already. I don't need a house job, too. Um, but thank you all for being here tonight. Um, let me address some additional comments. Uh, one of the things that everyone wants to know about this process 
uh, is when is the special session going to be? Uh, and the truth is, we don't know when the special session is going to be. Typically, the information is in from the Census Bureau by early April, uh, of the specific data that would tell where the population shifts or where the growths have been within, within the state. Uh, this year, though, they're telling us that we're not expected to get that data until the end of September. So a special session obviously wouldn't be until sometime after that. Um, but uh, there's still uh, also some lawsuits that are pending uh, about the data that has come and that which will come also. Uh, so we can't do a lot until we get the census data. So we'll be collecting comments now, as Chairman Rich said, about the process and the needs of the state. And we'll likely hear from more people once we have some certainty about the timing uh, of that data coming in. At some point after these hearings, we will have committee meetings to adopt the district team guidelines and principles. So tonight, for this hearing, uh, the first uh, or, or uh, the first for Athens, and we chose Athens as one of the locations to have our hearing, obviously. Uh, we're going to have uh, approach things by watching a short video that will be informative for you about the process that our media services folks have put together to educate everyone on some basics of redistricting in Georgia. Then we're going to open it up to the individuals that have signed up to speak tonight, and as Chairman Rich said, we try to adjust the allotted time we have to give everyone the maximum amount within the two-hour period. So based on the sign-up, we should have uh, we should have four minutes. Um, often when politicians hold hearings, they really hold hearings because they want to hear themselves talk. That's not why we're why we're here. We're not here. Trust trust me, Chairman Rich and I don't want to hear ourselves talk. We're here for the purpose of listening to you, and that's why we're going around the state. Our purpose is to hear from you, and then consistent with how we handled these hearings in 2001, and also the 2011 cycles. Uh, we're not going to ask questions or answer questions. We're going to listen to whatever it is you want us to hear, and whatever you want to share with us tonight. Um, so, in order to respect everyone's time, if you'll please be mindful of that four-minute period, we're going to have... Um, Alley Farmer here is going to have a clock and then we'll go off in four minutes. And if you would please be respectful of that time, and that's not for us, that's just to be respectful of the people behind you that have also signed up and want to talk to us. All these hearings are being recorded, uh, so you will have the benefit of that moving forward. I too, like Chairman Rich, I want to thank the people that have traveled across the state that are members of the Senate Redistricting Committee and members of the House Redistricting Committee. These are your public servants that have come here tonight to hear from y'all. Uh, finally, I want to recognize uh, my vice chair of the district committee, your very own Senator Bill Council, who represents the last two years. He represents a large part of Clark County and other counties and works very hard for these people. He's been bragging on how proud he is to represent his district, so I'm proud to get some of the people he brags on a lot when he's in capital. So, with that, uh, if I may, Chairman Will, we'll turn it over to the video that we'll play, and then we'll start announcing the folks um, to come and address us tonight. Thank you. Every 10 years following the decennial census, the process of redistricting begins all over our country. Let's take a look at what that redistricting is and what else we need to know before we begin this process in the state of Georgia. My name is Gina Wright, and I'm the Executive Director of the Office of Legislative and Congressional Reapportionment. We are a nonpartisan joint office of the Georgia General Assembly, and we serve both the House and the Senate. What is redistricting? As the population in our state grows, the number of people in each district must be adjusted so that the population in each district is as close to equal as practicable. This is done by redistricting, or modifying the boundary lines of the districts. In Georgia, our new 2020 census resident population total is 10,711,980 people. Because of this population increase, each of our 14 congressional districts will need to adjust to have 765,136 people in them. At the state level, our legislative branch of government has 56 state senators and 180 representatives in the state house, elected by districts. State senate districts will be redrawn to now include around 191,284 people. 
State House districts will also need to increase in population size to around 59,511 people. In the Georgia General Assembly, there is a standing committee on redistricting in both the House and the Senate. Each committee has a chairman. Hi, I'm Bonnie Rich. I'm chairman of the Legislative and Congressional Reapportionment Committee of the State House. I've served in that capacity since 2019. Since 2018, I have represented District 97, which includes parts of Duluth, Swanee, and Sugar Hill in Gwinnett County. Hello, I'm State Senator John F. Kennedy. I represent the 18th District in the State Senate, which includes all of Monroe, Peach, Crawford, and Hudson Yellows, and part of Bibb County and House of County. I also chair of the Senate Redistricting and Reapportionment Committee. What is reapportionment, and how is it different from redistricting? The term apportionment is the act of dividing and allocating representation proportionally. The United States Constitution requires that all 435 House districts shall be apportioned among the 50 states based on population from each decennial census. There is a guarantee of at least one seat per state in the United States House, and a method of equal proportions determines how the other 385 are distributed. Every 10 years, states may gain or lose congressional districts based on how they gain or lost population in comparison to other states based on data from the decennial census. The state of Georgia presently has 14 seats in the U.S. House. And the 2010 census resulted in a gain of one new seat for the state following an increase of two new districts in 2000. It's common to interchange the term reapportionment with the term redistricting, but the two terms really don't mean the same thing. Reapportionment only occurs at the federal level when U.S. House districts are distributed amongst the states. Even with the gain of over a million people in Georgia over the past decade, Georgia will continue to have 14 congressional districts. When does redistricting take place? Traditionally, the governor of Georgia issues a call for a special legislative session in late summer or early fall following the arrival of the new census data. The sole purpose of this session is to adopt newly redrawn maps for all statewide district plans and may also include new maps for local county commission or school board districts. The session occurs so that all county election officials have sufficient time to update voter district assignments once the process is complete prior to elections the next year. After the Georgia General Assembly adopts new maps and the governor signs the bills into law, they become the new election districts for use in the next election cycle or on the date specified in the legislation. This year, with COVID-related delays in the census, the special session will likely take place later in the year because we will not receive full census data until late August or September. What other factors do we have to consider besides equal population? The first mission of redistricting is to ensure that districts are roughly equal to each other. Equalizing population ensures that each individual's vote counts the same toward their representatives. But equal population is only one part of the puzzle. Maps must also comply with the Voting Rights Act of 1965 and traditional principles of redistricting, like ensuring communities of interest are represented, avoiding major changes to existing representation in the legislature, and keeping local government jurisdictions whole. Those legal criteria are what often keeps maps from being drawn as perfect squares across our state. Why do we have public hearings? The redistricting process begins with hearing from the public. The General Assembly is ready to hear from you about the uniqueness of your part of the state, what communities of interest are here, and what important factors it should consider as we all prepare to redraw the districts later this year. Identify that we are 
in Senator Frank Ginn's Senate district, and Senator Ginn is with us tonight. Senator, thank you for being here. Good to be with y'all. Ms. Graham, you have a floor. Good evening, uh, Chairs Kennedy and Rich and members of the committee. Um, my name is Janet Grant and I'm a resident of the city of Decatur in DeKalb County. I also serve as Vice Chair of Fair Districts Georgia and I'm really pleased to have the opportunity to testify at this hearing uh, this evening. Um, I'm here to ask that you address communities of interest during the upcoming redistricting cycle by restoring unified city house district representation across the state, including my own city of Decatur. Um, we moved to Georgia two years ago, and I was surprised when researching my elected officials to find the shape of my and the surrounding house districts um, were sometimes referred to as bacon strips. Um, House District 83, where I live, is one mile wide and 17 miles long, starting in North Druid Hills and extending to the southern border of the county, of, um, uh, butting up to Henry County, covering portions of six different cities and nine zip codes. This, while the city of Decatur itself is split into four house districts. Um, I've gotten to know my House Representative, Becky Evans, well, and have found her very responsive, but I know how difficult it is for her to represent the needs of so many diverse communities. And I know that for the city of Decatur and its residents, having four separate representatives means that we don't have any one representative that's really focused on the needs of our community. In the work that Fair Districts has completed with the Princeton Gerrymandering Project, um, we have learned that this division of small cities isn't unique to Decatur in Georgia. In fact, two-thirds of the 85 small cities in Georgia are actually split into multiple house districts, despite having populations that could be contained within one district. This technique appears to have been used for partisan purposes in the 2011 redistricting cycle, which resulted in a 44% increase in these city splits. The practice has also continued in the numerous subsequent mid-decade district changes made in 2012, 2014, and 2015. I ask that you listen to the residents of Georgia about their communities and conduct a transparent process that results in fair maps. For my community, that means a unified city that would be served by one house district. Thanks for the opportunity to testify today. Thank you, Ms. Grant. Regina Smith. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I live in Athens, Georgia. I've been here since 2001, and we are the smallest county in the state, and we are split into multiple districts for Senate and for House of Representatives. I'm here to talk to you this morning about something a little different. And we all agree that each of us, everybody here, has faith. Whether it's faith in God, faith in science, faith in a moral code, or faith in our American democracy. Our faiths have been guiding us for generations, and they're the glue that binds us all together. Now, the 2020 redistricting exercise, frankly, gentlemen and ladies, is going to test our faiths. I, as a mere citizen of Georgia, must keep faith that each and every one as our representatives, will represent all of us, and that includes everybody in this facility today and the millions of people in Georgia who aren't here. So my question is, will each of you, this time, be a profile of courage and do the right thing by all of us? Will you work honestly and openly in committee to justify our faith in you and in our democracy? 
I want you all to look deep into your heart. I want you to step up. I want you to respect all Georgia voters equally. And I want you all to ensure that we retain our voice. Now, you may find it risky. You know what's going on in Georgia these days. It may even be uncomfortable. But to do the right thing, I want you to know this. It is never, ever wrong to do the right thing. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Smith. Kathy Lynn Sanders. Next, please, will be followed by Ida King and Angela Green. Okay, is Kathy Lynn Sanders signed? Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Please forgive me. Thank you. Sure. Yes, ma'am. It's um, okay. Well, she doesn't have that to follow, but. Um, so, my name is Kathy Lynn Sanderson. My husband and I have lived in Athens Clark County, also known as ACC, for seven years. And in ACC, we have found a true community a compact geographic area where the residents share cultural, social, and economic bonds, as well as a belief in the power of civic engagement. All of these bonds are nurtured by the presence of the University of Georgia and fortified by a unified city-county government that is responsive to its citizens. In the jargon of redistricting experts, ACC is a community of interest. To the extent possible, the intact preservation of such a community is essential to democracy because it empowers a community to elect representatives responsible to it and it encourages civic involvement. The integrity of the ACC community of interest was violated in the 2011 redistricting. ACC was severed into pieces and lumped into gerrymandered districts, both at, at, state and, at the state and congressional level. Some of the officials elected by these gerrymandered districts have ignored the voice of the ACC community and have sometimes acted absolutely contrary to ACC's expressed policies. A specific example of such absolute negation occurred in the spring of 2019. At that time, the duly elected legislative body of ACC, acting within its authority, voted unanimously to eliminate cash bail for the violation of ACC ordinances. In an attempt to defeat this policy, some of the officials of the gerrymandered state districts proposed state legislation to preempt ACC's right to end cash bail. Clearly, the intent behind this proposal was to deny the wishes of the ACC community. Seven communities of interest is not how a democracy works. In fact, it is toxic to the health of democracy and it discourages citizen involvement in government and fosters distrust and disillusionment. I appreciate very much that you are holding these hearings to gather input from the community. I truly hope that you will use this input to guide your decision making and to the extent preserve communities of all the communities of interest in Georgia to the extent possible and specifically at this Clark County. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Anderson. I will keep next, followed by Angela Green and then Barry Kerwin. Hello. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to, at this hearing. My name is Ida King. I'm a retired speech language pathologist from the Kelly County School System. I'm also co chair of the Indivisible Georgia District 10. Indivisible Georgia District 10 was founded in January 2017 on the values of inclusion, fairness, respect, and nonviolence. We currently have about 600 members. Our membership represents Georgia's dis Congressional District 10. It spans 25 counties, stretching from Athens Clark County to Baldwin County, and from Gwinnett County to Augusta, although our home base is here in Athens Clark County. 
We are here today to focus on the integrity of Georgia's redistricting map building procedure following the 2020 U.S. Census. Several of our members will speak in support of a fair, nonpartisan redistricting process that creates competitive voting districts and that represents the will of all the voters of Georgia. Our members understand the impact of district voting rights on Georgia's federal, state, and local elections. We monitor redistricting issues across Georgia and have participated in some of the recent mid-cycle hearings that attempted partisan redrawing of district maps. And we know that both Democrats and Republicans have used redistricting to gain additional seats through calculated gerrymandering. That's why we're here. We believe unbiased election integrity will be accomplished through a nonpartisan, data-driven, transparent process involving citizen input and expertise of organizations such as Fair Districts Georgia and the Princeton Redistricting Project. Today, several indivisible Georgia District 10 members come before you to enter testimony about Athens Park County, about Congressional District 10, and more importantly, about steps to improve Georgia's redistricting process. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. King. Angela Green, please. My name is Angela Green. I'm a retired Human Resources Director and um, a member of Indivisible Georgia District 10. I live in Winterville, which is in Congressional District 9, um, due to gerrymandering. Although I'm in the same county and community of interest to those in District 10, I cannot vote with my voting community. The same is true of Athens Tech, which is also in District 9. Athens Clark County has over 128,000 residents in the smallest county in the state by land mass. Education is a high priority issue in Athens Clark County, as we are the home of the University of Georgia, which represents almost 25% of our economy. And our population is quite diverse, with 29% Black, 11% Hispanic, Latino, 5% Asian, and 63% White. athens Clark County was in the 12th Congressional District until 2004, when the Georgia Legislature folded our urban county into the rural 10th District. A special election in 2007 gave our voters a choice between two conservative Republican candidates. <coughs> and we've been unable to elect a more centrist congressperson ever since. The 2011 redistricting effort split our county into districts 9 and 10. This means that Athens Park County's voting voice has been diluted and divided. Because many of our elections are not competitive, we experience lopsided election results every two years. The Princeton Gerrymandering Project's 20-year modeling process reveals that approximately 60% of small towns and cities in Georgia have been systematically gerrymandered. We believe athens Clark County, a known democratic stronghold, has been purposely gerrymandered to dilute our political voice and will. That is why we are speaking out in favor of a fair, transparent, and nonpartisan redistricting process so neither party as an advantage. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Mrs. Green. Uh, Mary Irwin, please, to be followed by Robert Cody and Jacqueline Ellsworth. Hi, thanks for having a hearing here in Clark County. For the record, Barry Irwin here for Indivisible Georgia District 10 is a longtime member of that organization and myself personally. As a lawyer in Clark County, I help people with criminal defense and consumer bankruptcy matters. Like each other member of our group, I'm strongly opposed to the current gerrymandering system of electing public officials in Georgia. Clark County has been subjected to near constant gerrymandering since at least the 2000 census when Democrats, then followed by Republicans, gerrymandered districts based on criteria that mathematically favor one party's candidates over another. Redistricting on state and local levels splits our county into two Senate districts and three House districts. Many of Clark County's diverse voters have been moved from two House districts into District 118, 
making District 118 the only one with a Democratic representative. Packing more Democrats into District 18 made District 117 and 119 much less competitive. In 2006, redistricting split our county between Senate District 46 and 47, thus discouraging competition for these two state Senate District seats because there are not enough votes for the minority party to ever win, resulting in five cycles of uncontested races between 2008 and 2016. Nationally, it's reported that 35% of state-level races are uncontested. In Georgia, it's reported that 50% of Senate and 52% of House district races are uncontested. Only four out of 56 Georgia state Senate districts are now considered to be competitive. Uncontested races have far-reaching effects on voters. The Princeton Gerrymandering Project found that when state races are uncontested, the votes for president fall off. In 2020, an estimate shows that 275,000 registered Georgia voters stayed home from the general election in districts where there were uncontested state races. With fairly drawn district lines, all candidates must compete for public office, which is the very definition of democracy. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Good evening. My name is Dr. Robert Covey, and I am a child and family developmentalist and retired psychologist. And I'm also a member of the Individual Georgia District 10, and I've lived in Georgia with my family since 1982, so at that long time, still living in the state. These hearings provide an opportunity to reform the redistricting system in Georgia. This is the job you have to undertake. We ask that you take two broad steps to build strong and sustaining a 10-year redistricting plan that is binding for both Republicans and Democrats as each party leads this work. First, the redistricting committees must provide meaningful opportunities for voters to learn about the mapping process and to provide input from voters across the state as distinct communities of interest. We ask that the redistricting process be transparent. Show your work publicly at every step along the way. We ask you to provide announcements for hearings via television, newspapers, radio, and social media. We ask you to make all hearings public with live and recorded videos for review at any time. And we ask you to publish all criteria used to draw districts and how they are used in the mapping process. We also ask you to publish comprehensible drafts of maps which were devoted to comment on at least two weeks before maps are adopted, taking public comments into consideration. Second, adopt, and this is what we want the redistricting committee to do, is to adopt a set of binding independent guidelines for mapping that adhere to nonpartisan and objective standards for redistricting no matter which political party draws the maps. Maps should reflect the will of the voters. Develop a set of standards for districts that reflect their political geography based on the most recent census data. Maps should be based on fair standards that build trust and confidence in the mapping process. Standardizing the redistricting process with best practices, guidelines, and rules will best serve Georgia voters now and into the future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Goodman. Jacqueline Nelson, please. Hello, I'm Jacqueline Elser. I'm a retired librarian at the Athens Regional Library, and I manage the Oconee County Libraries. I was a co-founder of Indivisible Georgia District 10 five years ago. Indivisible Georgia District 10 urges the House and Senate and districting committees to design a fair and transparent redistricting process that will serve Georgia in perpetuity so the process does not have to be redesigned every 10 years. 
The process developed must be fair, nonpartisan, transparent, and secure. In addition, all nearly the cycle redistricting efforts should be eliminated in Georgia. Our district's maps should reflect our natural political geography. Based on the 2020 census, Georgians should be represented by candidates they choose. We ask you to consider two ways to achieve fair, achieve fair and honest redistricting reform. First, the first way is for the current House and Senate redistricting committee members to commit to a rigorous set of binding nonpartisan standards factors for drawing Georgia's voting districts that are made public. Second, a way is for current redistricting committee members to commit to a single consistent redistricting plan used following every U.S. Census that incorporates all the principles and guidelines <clears throat> that result in fair, unbiased mapping tools and redistricting process. Thanks for listening to us and to others here with the same message. Thank you. Vicki Krugman, please, followed by Teresa Tran. Hello, I'm Vicki Krugman, and thank you for being in athens Club County. We welcome you here any day, every day. Please come. Thank you. Hello, I'm Vicki Krugman, a past co-chair of Indivisible Georgia District 10. I'm retired from Clark County School District as overseeing the gifted ESL immigrant and migrant programs. Today, ex existing state constitutional standards have not provided for a fair, excuse me, and consistent redistricting process for Georgia voters. Every year, legislators redraw redistricting plans that favor the majority party to the demise of Georgia's confidence in elections. In 2011, the following guidelines for both congressional and state legislative districts were agreed upon by redistricting committees, but not signed into law. And those were a prohibition of multi-member districts, consideration of county and precinct boundaries, compactness, and incorporating communities of interest. Because these were so-called gentlemen's agreements, they were not binding, and they have been altered over the years through gerrymandering. Indivisible Georgia District 10 asks that you take two broad steps to build a strong, sustaining, 10-year redistricting plan that is legally binding for both Republicans and Democrats as they lead their work in all coming years. First, adopt binding and legal transparency rules with meaningful opportunities for voters to learn about the mapping process. Encourage input from communities across the state regarding their unique needs as communities of interest. Second, adopt a set of binding, legal, independent benchmarks for mapping that include objective, nonpartisan standards for redistricting to be followed by whichever political party draws the maps. And in summary, Standardizing and legalizing the redistricting process with binding rules and best practices will best serve Georgia voters in 2022 and beyond with a strong, consistent, predictable redistricting plan. Now is the time to put redistricting standards into law, and in order to build that, excuse me, I'm going to say that again. Now is the time to put redistricting standards into law in order to build back the confidence of voters, the integrity, and the fairness of our elections. We urge you to put these in law. Thank you. Ms. Teresa Tran, to be followed by Sue Cho, and then Samuel Short, please. Hi, good evening. Good evening. My name is Tracy Tran, and I am a community organizer with the Asian American Advocacy Fund, a nonprofit organization dedicated to building a politically conscious, engaged, and progressive Asian American base in Georgia. Thank you to the Athens Clark County members and chairs for organizing this town hall. 
It's good to be back in town after having been away since graduating the BA and the BS from the University of Georgia as the class of 2021 student speaker for the Mary Frances Early College of Education this past May. Well, I originally grew up in Gwinnett County. I actually lived in Athens for four years while attending UGA as a full-time college student. For four years, I called Athens home, and I'm now back here to fight for that home. From 2017 to 2021, I studied English education and had multiple opportunities to teach middle and high school students in Athens Clark as part of my student teaching program. More specifically, I taught language arts at Clark Central High School, where I interacted with a diverse population of students, including Asian American students, with all with various needs. From listening to their stories and reading their work, I learned that many of my students lacked faith in their capabilities of using their voice to impact their community for the better, because they saw no one who looked like them doing the same in this county. I learned that many of my students were not aware of how they could effectively participate in local elections and town halls or contact their local representatives and charity people to push for the kind of change they wanted to see, such as receiving more funding and better, more edu updated resources for their school because they were deliberately left out of the community conversation. I learned that my students' families were always having to move houses or change schools for their kids or end up in the wrong polling place because the district lines kept shifting. And I learned that my students had no idea that all of this was a direct result of an unfair, unjust, and unrepresentative redistricting process in this county. With these thoughts and looking ahead to the next decade, I urge the lawmakers in this county to bring more transparency to this process. I encourage that drafts of maps be drawn, be shared with the general public as soon as possible, <laughs> and that we continue these types of town hall sessions, especially once data is released from the Census Bureau, so that everyone, from parents to business owners to residents to teachers to students, can share their concerns and alternative maps that actually reflect the true makeup of their community and keep their homes neighborhoods, shopping centers, places of worship, and schools together. I understand that you must see me as an outsider, as someone who came here to receive an education and then simply leave. And I want to tell you that I am deeply invested in this community. Athens gave me an invaluable four years. I have been thoroughly changed and impacted by the residents here. I want to come back to fight and ensure that the students I taught in this county and the families I met and the neighborhoods I visited and volunteered at actually stay together and have the power to elect the candidates of their choice rather than letting the candidates choose their voters. Our students, our youth, our children are counting on us to pave the way for them to make a difference. And that starts with increased transparency, accessibility, and their district lines. Thank you. And it's just hard to know how the district lines are drawn. 
So they often feel discouraged and do not participate in local election. As our Asian American population is growing and our communities are extending in the Tretlena, we urge the new districts to reflect the current demographic changes and be better represented to the interests of our community so we can elect candidates who truly understand and advocate for the needs of our communities. Keeping our communities together is key in redistricting. In Korean American history, we have seen how unrepresented redistricting badly impacted and fractured our communities. For example, during 1992 social unrest in Los Angeles, Korean Americans in LA Korea towns suffered disproportionately high economic losses. When residents of Korea town appealed to their elected representative for assistance with the cleanup and recovery efforts, each of the purported representatives claimed that the area was not really a part of some other, not of their other uh, official district. Because the redistricting manufactured Koreatown into four city council district and five state assembly district, and as a result, no legislator felt responsible to the Asian American community. No community deserved any political, racial, and economic disadvantages due to unfair, unjust, and unrepresentative redistricting. And we need to make sure the voices of, the voices of all community members are heard and our interests are represented, represented in this process to protect and thrive our communities, not to protect incumbents and political interests. The fair, transparent, and inclusive redistricting process in Georgia will ensure a healthy democracy in our country. Thank you. Samuel Stewart, followed by Jack Warshaw. Hello, y'all. Thanks for having me today. Uh, I'm Samuel Clark Short. I'm a lifelong resident of Georgia, and I'm a student at the University of Michigan. I have the honor to serve as an intern in the state senate this session. Many of you may recognize me, but I recognize you. One thing that I recognize is the problems with our process. The problems with the partisanship and the bills that we put out in this session are not based on our community's interests, are not based on what are best for the constituents, but are based on what is best for the world. I have spent my life in partisan organizing, and one thing that I have found is that the parties do not represent the people. As someone who has served as a delegate on my party committee and in different capacities from high school organizing to youth organizing, I have seen that partisan action is inaction. If you have continual partisan-tainted processes, you will get a partisan-tainted legislature. If you pack and crack these districts, you will have, will have a legislature packed with people that do not represent their communities. Senator Kouser, your district does not represent Athens. It is split on a district that is not fully representative of the city and is meant to diffuse the power of your voters. That is the last thing you should be doing. <laughs> Any of you, whether you are Democrat or Republican, because yes, that's what you do. That's what I've seen. You will always serve your partisan interests until changes are made where the power is not in your hands. I have not heard one person who has spoken today that thinks that this power should be in your hands. I hope that you institute guidelines that will make this process more fair. I truly do. I wish I had as much faith as the second speaker. But unfortunately, what I have seen from my involvement in partisan politics is that partisanship serves partisanship. Until you take a change, nothing will change. In 10 years, the shoe may be on the other foot. I hope that I am not sitting here in 10 years making the same complaints. Please, I ask you to, to consider the fate of your communities, not the fate of your party. Thank you. throughout my time in high school and here in college. Um, my main role at home 
I'm working on campaigns was canvassing and speaking directly to voters. I've knocked on thousands of doors and engaged with thousands of people, and it's really been an honor to hear what people think of the democratic process while standing at their own doorstep. Um, I've seen how communities are divided. I've driven 20 minutes away to a completely different community where these people who I'm talking to would never have been in the same situation, never have been worried about the same issues, yet are still represented by the same person who has just as little in common with them as they do with each other. I felt what it's like to flip a seat and put a whole district with a target on their back when redistricting comes around at the threat of being dissolved because it doesn't align with the party in power. I've seen this issue not just in Dunwoody, but across the state when I moved here to Athens to attend the University of Georgia. I've seen the issues that I've spoken about in my democracy and the Constitution class by not protecting communities of interest, by cracking and hacking. I've seen it all here in Athens and at home. This issue is not centered in one spot. It is widespread because of the process that allows those in power to choose, their represent, to choose who they represent instead of the other way around. And once these reps are chosen, they should not be under attack from their colleagues simply because they aren't the ones in power. One of the key characteristics of fair reapportionment and redistricting are violated in almost every part of the state, you know that it is a systematic effort by those in power, which is why this power should not be in your hands and why there needs to be legal safeguards to prevent this from happening, no matter which party has the, has the gavel. We must allow communities a clear voice to have their issues addressed on their terms and allow their representatives to fight for their interests and not the interests of their party. We must end gerrymandering to make redistricting a fair and transparent process that hopefully will not be political in any way. So, thank you. Joseph Williams, please. I'd like to say hello and thank you to the community members for coming here today to listen to the people of Athens and surrounding communities. Um, my name is Logan Williamson. I lived in Athens for 14 years and I'm a foundation fellow at UGA. Currently, UGA and campus is split between Georgia House Districts 117, 118, and 119 in a way that I've walked through all three districts just moving between classes. <laughs> Even more than this, depending on where we live off campus within Clark County, we may be sectioned off into different Georgia State Senate or federal house districts with different rep representatives in different elections. As UGA students, we will move into the future to majorly impact, change, and improve industry and economy both in Georgia and nationally. We are fractured in, represent in electing our representatives. Even more, UGA professors and faculty, many of whom I've taken classes from or are parents of my friends, stay in Athens more permanently than the students who are, and they are also broken up by the current districting of Clark County. With better districts, our residents could vote for representatives who prioritize issues specific to Athens, like the USG system, um, public transportation, parks and green space, public education, programs for homeless citizens, and many other issues that are distinct from those in other communities that we share districts with. The current districts are a disservice to both students and permanent residents, preventing both sets of voters from easily organizing for important priorities. By splitting and unnecessarily, unnecessarily grouping the, this unique community, our elections and representation are diluted by more rural regions that are very different from Clark County in many ways. The result of this is that both in Clark and surrounding areas, we can't pressure our representatives for issues on behalf of the needs of our district because those needs may differ and diverge because of the way that they're drawn. In the upcoming redistricting process, I ask that you enable Clark County to have districts that prioritize the needs of our community. Democracy is effective because our representatives are meant to advocate for the needs of their constituents. I hope that you let the redistricting process make this true for the constituents living in Athens Clark County. Please prioritize the unity of UGA campus in the level of state house districts and the unity of Clark County on all of those decisions too. Thank you so much. Speaker will be Adam Shirley, followed by Kayla Kane and Deirdre Suzuki. Mr. Shirley, it's nice to have you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Madam Chair, Mr. Chair, and other members of the committee who are here and the legislature, uh, thank you for coming and thank you for listening to our concerns. 
Uh, my name is Adam Shirley, and I am a middle school teacher living out by what used to be the varsity, may rest in peace. Um, I have the honor of corresponding with many of you over email and meeting with several of you in person. Uh, tonight I'm asking you to succeed where many of us have failed. Uh, to be clear, I'm not disputing what you have the right to do or what is fair to do. The U.S. Supreme Court ruled last year that you have the right to draw the maps as part of the you please. That's the virtue, the right you have by virtue of winning election. So that's not something I'd like to argue about. But I'm asking you to do what you can to end the vicious cycle. Uh, for decades, our state government, in both Democratic and Republican hands, has consistently drawn legislative districts to strongly favor one party. Now, I'm not just saying the Democrat-controlled government through only Democrat districts. It's that each party has sort of drawn safe districts for one party or another. This has left many Georgians feeling as though they're not represented in the government. A couple of examples. One of her colleagues has represented Southwest Cobb County in the House since 2010 and has never had an opponent. Another colleague has represented almost all of Hall County in the Senate since 2010 and has had zero opponents. This is true of many of her colleagues, both Democrat and Republican, although many more of them are Republicans than Democrats. I ask you to consider that this is a failure of representative democracy and our representative republic. Suppose a citizen of Powder Springs wants to run as a Republican. Suppose a voter in Gainesville wants to see someone who represents their democratic values running for the legislature. For both of those people, and for tens of thousands of others of us, for the last 10 years or more, it has been hard to convince them that their vote really matters. You have the power to change this. Please maximize the number of competitive districts. By competitive, I mean what some of us call toss-ups, something, a district that could go either way, because just about as many Democrat-leaning voters are in the district as Republican-leaning voters. I know that both state parties have highly refined algorithms for drawing, you know, turf canvassing maps for this, and I trust that our office, the office that works for you, has the same resources. Uh, excuse me. You have the power and the capability to do this. By maximizing the number of competitive districts, you accomplish two very important things. First, you give more people the freedom to fairly compete for office. As it stands now, many Georgians only have one candidate seeking to represent them in uh, our government because our district puts so many of our uh, one political party in favor in so many of our districts. Uh, people who might aspire to office simply don't try because their district makes fair competition impossible. Notice I'm not naming a party here. It goes both ways and it has for decades. Maximizing the number of competitive districts will restore this competition. Second, you provide candidates an incentive to represent all their constituents, not just their party's base. With our current max, for far too many contests, the candidate focuses on their base and ignores anyone who's too far from their base because, in too many cases, their base is all they need to carry the election. By maximizing the number of competitive districts, you ensure that we elect more legislators whose ideas and rhetoric resemble all Georgians, not just the far left or the far right of each major party. I completely understand that you and your colleagues would prefer to represent safe districts, where someone like the two legislators I mentioned earlier would remain uncontested. Uh, this would mean that they wouldn't have to put in the blood, sweat, tears, and lots and lots of money to run a contested election for office. There's a strong natural temptation to draw maps that create these safe districts. Please resist this temptation. For one thing, it's not fair to those of you who do have to run contested elections. All Georgians benefit when each one has an equal shot at each legislator's seat. You and you alone have the power to maximize the number of competitive districts. Thank you very much for your time. For Hello, thank you everyone for being here today. Uh, my name is Kara Kane, and I'm a data research analyst with the Southern Permian Law Center's Human Rights Group. The SPLC is a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization dedicated to upgrading the fundamental right of all citizens to vote. I'm a registered voter, and I currently live in Dickhaw County. Throughout these hearings, we have heard key terms like fairness, gerrymandering, communities of interest, and transparency. Today, I'm here to tell a short story of how interesting that it's not only political power and resources for the next decade, but also the lives of young people whose voices are often left out of the process. Not too many years ago, I moved from Florida to Loganville, a city split between Baldwin and Gwinnett County. My family lived on the Walton side, so I went to Loganville High School. My first day at the school was as traumatizing as the next four years would be. Racist teachers, students, and the spread of white supremacy filled the halls of my high school. 
I couldn't count on two hands the number of fellow students who were not white in my class. Two hands. That's ten people or less. My saving grace was upper. It was only when we played the other school in, in our county that I realized that the county did indeed have a significant population of folks who didn't look like me. It was in that moment that I knew the lines were off. I didn't realize how, how those lines were drawn until I got older. As I mentioned earlier, my work is in voting rights. My experience in high school along with my personal story of voter suppression with the current Governor Kemp has led me to do the work that I currently do. As it often does, my lived experiences match up with the data at the time. For example, the year I graduated, according, according to our Department of Education, my high school comprised of 6.8% of black students and approximately 87% of white students, even though the county consisted of 50% black population during the same time. 87%. Almost 9 out of 10 students in my high school were white. Let that sink in. Almost 90%. Meanwhile, the only other high school at the time consisted of over 40% black students. As a young person trying to figure out the world, the redistricting lines create a high school experience that was far from ideal. Even after all these years, I get that anxiety driving through Walton County, something that I try to avoid, knowing the experiences I went through. I share my story today to emphasize how important redistricting is. Not for political power, not to ensure y'all's re-election, but for the young people who feel the consequences of this process. We should want our young people to be exposed to people who look different, and, who, and we welcome people who come from different backgrounds than ours. Otherwise, we create a culture that makes Jim Crow 2.0 easier than ever. Redistricting has consequences. Thank you. Um, hi, I'm Deirdre Sidiuchi, and um, I'm a former public school librarian at, in Clark County and a writer here in Athens, and I'm here to speak in favor of drawing equitable redistribution maps, maps that represent Jordan's and opinions. Since I moved here in 1994 um, to Athens, Clark County, which is the smallest county in Georgia, it's been um, redistributed twice. Um, currently, we have three state senators and two state reps. When a population, when our county really should have just two state senators and one state rep. Growing up, I was taught that representative government is what we have here in America. Now, as an adult, I recognize this in actuality. It's never been realized. I'm begging you here to please draw maps that represent Georgians. Um, fair maps because um, fair maps that are nonpartisan because political gerrymandering is not ethical and they delete the voice of the people. And what I'm asking you is to listen to the young people that have spoken and think about the young people that have not that are here to speak because the decisions that y'all make now are going to impact the future. And I really do appreciate you listening to us. Thank you. And then Chris Bruce, and then after Mr. Bruce, we have Johnny Cusimano. Good evening, and thank you for the opportunity to testify. I'm Barbara Leach. I live in Atlanta in the 5th Con Congressional District, uh, State Senate District 36, and House District 59. However, I come from a long line of Georgians with roots in Forsyth, Cobb, and Fayette counties. So it won't surprise you when I tell you that we have a, uh, a lot of political differences in our family, and those conversations are not comfortable. Um, I appreciate your willingness to listen to uncomfortable conversations, and I appreciate that your task is, is a challenging one, but I firmly believe that we all deserve fair representation. We deserve a transparent redistricting process which is open to public scrutiny. We deserve to have you listen when we talk about our communities and our common local interests. We want you to show us your work and allow more public access to the process. And very importantly, 
We need independent, nonpartisan benchmarks to show us that the 2021 maps reflect voters' preferences and provide adequate minority representation. Because I believe that we all deserve fair representation, I'm a member of Fair Districts Georgia, a nonpartisan organization working to promote fair maps. And as others have mentioned today, we partnered with the Princeton Gerrymandering Project to produce independent benchmarks. But so far, we haven't been able to share our work with the full House and Senate committees as part of the official record. And I really appreciate your opening comments, Sharon Rich, because we agree with you that submission should be through the portal on the Georgia General Assembly website. Um, but as other speakers have noted, um, the comments link on the website is designed for plain text comments. To share our work, we need a portal that allows attachments. Um, thus far, we've presented our findings to a small group of legislators, and as you can tell from some of the previous comments this evening, um, we've also shared it with the public in town hall meetings and on our website. Um, Today, we've actually brought hard copies for the committee chairs, and we'll be happy to make the presentation available to anyone else who asks. However, we do believe that transparency and openness to public scrutiny are best served by submission to the official record through the General Assembly website, and therefore, we ask you, the committee chairs, to make submission of more complex documents um, as attachments
people of color. Let's be honest about this. And to ensure everyone's sacred right to vote is protected, the maps that the legislature draw must be fair. Fair maps require making sure that the people of color have a voice in this process and that growing diversity of the greater Athens area is adequately reflected and in the resulting maps that you ultimately create. So the decisions made during this redistricting process will impact, like I said before, the lives of the greater Athens area and countless Georgians for the next 10 years or possibly more. There, this is a tremendous responsibility for the legislature. It is of the utmost importance that this body work diligently and transparently to ensure that people of color have a voice in this process because democracy demands it. Personally, I am a proud graduate of the University of Georgia School of Law, of Dogs, and I always love coming back to Athens area. Uh, these are a group of people who have a tremendous part of uh, when it comes to everyone in this community. I used to work at Georgia Legal Services Program where I worked with black and people who came from low income residents. Now I would respect the time with Andy was saying that Athens Clark County School ranks as one of the lowest income counties in the nation. And we need to make sure that when they're drawing maps, they have a chance to let somebody who will speak up for them in their needs all together. Thank you. Good evening, and thank you for allowing us to speak to you all this evening. Uh, I've been a, I'm just one of those transplant Yankees that came here and fell in love with for Georgia. I've been here over 30 years now. I particularly appreciate some of the young people and their powerful message of wanting to be able to see change instantly. Uh, that's something that as I've grown in age, I realize it's not taking place overnight. <laughs> But I sincerely hope that this community, this committee here, leads the way in the legislature to make the changes that are needed to make this more fair for all the citizens of Georgia, particularly for this community. I moved here three years ago thinking that I was moving to, in my opinion, aggressive area, only to discover that everything is split in so many ways that there's not a chance in H-E-L-L to get anything done that meets the needs of what I believe in and hope for. And this is a small community. I hope that you will support it. Representative uh, Councilor, I sincerely hope, sir, that you, if this done correctly, that you remain in our district to uh, have our successful citizens vote for you. Or not, if you choose. <laughs> and if not, that you are the district that does not represent us. But the way it's spread out right now, there's no chance that we would ever have a defeating you or anyone similar in your party with the dynamics they set up in this community as it is. And that's just not much. And so I ask in all respect that you draw a community that fairly represents the people of Athens and Clark County. And that's sir, if that is doable for you, that's great. If it's not, that's okay too. <laughs> 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 Senator, for giving up your seat. Uh, I've never had a senator on the other side of me before. Uh, my name is Barry Sanders. I live in the 103rd State House District and the 10th Congressional District, more specifically, the 39th voting precinct of Grant County. In the last redistricting a decade ago, the 39th and the 135th voting precinct of Mississippi Creek were separated from the rest of our community and placed in the 103rd State House District rather than the 98th. In our unique community, we share the same zip code, the same city name, the same high school, secondary high school, which opens later this year. And more importantly, we share similar interests, common problems, and, and common values 
more aligned with our 98th state house district neighbors more than our current other and third. Tonight, I represent my neighbors of these two precincts who respectfully ask this committee to consider reuniting the 39th and the 135th voting precincts with the 98th state house district and the 7th congressional district. This would form a more natural eastern boundary with Interstate 85 and the Hall County border to the north. Thank you for hearing our request and your consideration on this matter. Sacer, followed by Gareth Finley, and then Don Arthur. Arthur. Hey, Thank you for coming here tonight to hear us. Uh, my name is Ann Sacer. Um, I'm a Montessori school teacher here in Athens. Uh, I've lived here since 2011, but I'm um, born and raised in Georgia. And um, I'm not going to be as eloquent as some of the speakers you've been for me, but I'm happy to join many of them in asking for a redistricting process that is done in nonpartisan, uh, with nonpartisan integrity and uh, that our, our maps are drawn with fair representation in democracy. Um, as has been said many times, Athens is a very geographically small county um, in Georgia, but we are chopped up into three state house representative seats and two state senate seats. And if the districts were to be drawn along logical political lines, Athens would actually be more, more a, a, accurately represented by two uh, House seats and one state Senate seat. Um, and my hope is that our state legislature will care more about the democratizing power than it does in partisan victories or political careers. Um, I also want to ask that the General Assembly listened to our uh, our local government in the local redistricting. Um, you know, our, our local officials here, they, they live here, they interact with us more, they know what our communities are asking for, so please be respectful of their recommendations when it comes to local redistricting. And then finally, I also want to address that this, this whole process right now really needs a, an overhaul. Um, redistricting as a I'm going, to, I'm going to quote the organization Fair Vote. It encourages manipulation of our elections. And right now, we have officials who will likely be incumbents drawn and deciding the districts in which they will be running. And how can the public possibly trust this process? And we need to look into having independent committees, commissions, the competitive districts, any of that. Many of these things have been implemented in other states. And I'm just asking that we do it here in my state. Thank Finley, followed by Don Arthur, and then Phyllis Barnett. Hello, Senators and Representatives. I'm Garrett Finley. I can't really see you in the back row there. I'm way down here. Um, I haven't rehearsed my speech. Um, I'm going to skip everything that I jotted down that is repeating what everybody else said. Um, my name again is Gareth Finley. I've been a resident of Georgia since 1989, except a few years in South Carolina. I earned a master's degree at the University of Georgia. Go dogs! <laughs> uh, together with, with my wife, I own a home and two rental properties in Monroe and Walton County. I do understand the anxiety that the young person spoke about driving through uh, Walton County uh, in the town of Monroe where I reside. It was only two years ago that the Confederate battle, battle flags came down. They were at each of the main entrances to our city on the Sons of Confederate Veterans <laughs> sign with a phone number to call. City of Monroe, Walton <laughs> County. Um, I'm currently Assistant Director of the Economic Justice Coalition, um, based in Athens and helping with nonpartisan voter registration across 13 counties, Walton, Carroll, Jackson, Banks, Madison, Hart, Elbert, Oglethorpe, Green, Hancock, Morgan, Mahoney, and here in Clark County. I don't like public speaking, it makes me nervous. 
Um, I have been helping people speak up and be counted uh, since before I could vote as starting Girl Scouts. Um, democracy is my passion. It just is. I, I too was one of those uh, pages for the legislature. Make communities count by drawing fair maps that don't split groups up, as you've been hearing all night. Like the vast majority of the people in this room tonight, I am white. The population of this room does not accurately reflect the population of this county or this region of Georgia. Yes, I'm here talking about white supremacy and racism. It's your responsibility, senators and representatives, to represent all the people, not just those who are here, not just those who were able to get here with transportation and time off and access to information and the belief that their vote would make a difference. Let's make sure that the people of color have a fair chance at the polls to elect representatives of their choice. I've seen it projected that within the next five years, changes in the population of Georgia will result in people like me, white, non-Hispanic residents, becoming a minority. We need to embrace this change in a peaceful, fair, and democratic transition. We need to give up white supremacy. And I have faith we can do it. I do have that faith. Throughout my life, and especially since I moved to Walton County in January 2018, I've been warned. I've been warned that it is literally dangerous to stand up for justice, especially racial justice, which I believe is the most pressing issue facing our country today. The most recent warning came a week ago from a neighbor I never met who knows me, at least he knows of me. I told that man the same thing I will say here, and my greatest protection is to stay open and public. Anyone who harms me because he hates my cause will only advance my cause. I think some of you understand the depth of commitment that you're willing to sacrifice your life for something more important. I know many of you do. Let this be the end of white supremacy in Georgia. Thank you. 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 Good evening. I thank you all for this opportunity. My name is Don Arthur. I live in Atlanta, where I attended a recent hearing at the Capitol, and I heard no mention during that evening of a particular type of gerrymandering that I want to bring to the committee's attention today. We have 55,000 residents in Georgia's 34 prisons that are counted by the census to be residents of the county where they are incarcerated. This prison gerrymandering impacts local counties such as Hancock, which reports 14% of its total population is actually in prison. Wilcox, 14%, Tatler County is greater than 16%. But by another measure, if we look at the second congressional district, that includes 10,296 prisoners in the county, which is a large number. That's like Hey, Dad, I need 10,000 votes. You got them? Give them to me. <laughs> so, of course, those people, they can't vote in our state like they can in other states. But if you're in prison in Georgia, or if you have a felony conviction, you cannot vote. But what this gerrymandering does is it greatly dilutes the community of interest of that incarcerated person. His children, his family are in miles away, hours away, and they're, they, they don't get the benefit of that person in the census count. Where they lived and worked and where they are more than likely to return, they don't have a voice. So that is a, a base effect, on, of course, on the larger urban areas like Atlanta and the counties surrounding those cities, but also rural counties such as Butts lose a good number of their population into the void of the prison system. 
So I'm urging you to look, to take a serious look at the laws that other states have passed that will correct this gross inaccuracy. And there's been many references to the Princeton gerrymandering project, which has a lot of information on uh, state legislation that's changed to take these inaccuracies into account. And more than 200 counties have changed their policies to, so that they can more correctly interpret the census data. Hopefully, and I'm looking to make this recommendation, the 2030 census will record the home address of incarcerated people. So even though they may still not be able to vote in Georgia, at least they will, their personhood will be taken into account. We will have accurate census count. Well, sadly, we can no longer look to the Supreme Court to protect our vote. It's really up to you, to this committee, and to a general assembly. The whole world is watching Georgia's elections. We're also watched internationally as a state with some of the most horrific, dangerous, and inhuman prisons anywhere. These households cost us more than $1 billion a year. Those inside have no voice, they cannot vote, so we really must vote for them. Count them as human beings, they get to count them as human beings, and they get to treat them as human beings. Thank you. Yeah. Followed by Hannah Gerberlaski and then Kat Fats. Hello, committee. My name is Phyllis Bryant, and I have been a resident of Decatur, Georgia for 29 years. I'm a member of the National Action Network in Atlanta, Georgia, and the Georgia Coalition of People Agenda. I like Don. I want to bring attention to how the census count incarcerated people in the county where they are in prison. We need accurate maps that reflect the real community of interest. And we need transparency so the public can see these maps. Comment on them before they are finalized. Prison gerrymandering inaccurately reports 55,000 people and includes them in the county where they are in prison. This is not how democracy should work. Be honest and transparent on how the lines are drawn. Thank you. And then Carol Myers. Good evening, everyone. My name is Hannah Joy Gebber Selassie. I'm a proud product of Georgia. I'm really honored to be here today. Good evening to everybody in the audience as well. Right now, we're experiencing something very important in Georgia. I think we all know that. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here today. Many of us wouldn't be back to these hearings to testify a second time, a third time, to protect our democracy, to defend voting rights, and to protect communities across this nation. As I mentioned, while I am a product of Georgia, specifically DeKalb County and Burnett County, I did get a chance to visit Athens several times throughout my upbringing. I was a student at Georgia Tech, and I had many friends that attended BGA, so there was a really nice, sweet bond there. But when I would come, I would notice that every year it would become more and more and more diverse. You look around right now, drive through town, you see Mediterranean restaurants that weren't there 10 years ago. 10 years later, we are a different Georgia than we were 10 years ago. So it's our duty, it's our responsibility to show up and to create maps that accurately reflect the new Georgia that we're living in. I think many of us can attest that when we walk through our own neighborhoods, whether you're in Athens or Atlanta or somewhere in the south part of the state, it's a different Georgia than it was 10 years ago. So what are you gonna do? What are we gonna do to act together to create maps that are fair, that are just, that are equitable, and that reflect the democracy that we live in? I want to uh, call, I want to direct attention to something, that was, a point that was made earlier. Uh, we did notice that you all expanded testimony to four minutes today, which I certainly applaud you all for uh, doing. But we also recognize that this is our First Amendment, right? We have the right to be here to express our voices and not be limited, not be given a time limit that we know will not allow us to accurately convey our messages. 
So while I do applaud you for taking that step, I also want to remind everyone here that that is our First Amendment and our democracy that you all are acting on. point real quick as well. While we here are given the four minutes to speak up and speak out, our colleagues and our friends down the street in Greensboro right now at a Greensboro City Council meeting where your colleague, Barry Fleming, serves as a city attorney, the mayor there has silenced public comment. That's right, the mayor has silenced public comment in Greensboro, Georgia right now at the city council meeting. And that is not fair. That is not acceptable. Uh, you all as leaders have an obligation to defend Georgians and our voices across the state, whether it's here in this meeting or whether it's at a city council meeting in Greensboro. And how do you do that? By allowing people to elect the people who will serve them. By allowing people to elect people who will address their concerns and truly protect our communities. I also want to note that um, earlier when you all opened up this, con this uh, season town hall today, you mentioned that at some point you all will adopt redistricting principles and guidelines. What will these principles and guidelines represent? Ask yourself that question right now. Can you answer that question? What core values will be embedded in these principles and guidelines that will impact millions of Georgians for the next decades and beyond? Will there be integrity? Will there be ethics? Will there be fairness? Will there be representation? Will there be democracy? Because we need all those values and more embedded in our state and the future of our country. Thank you. Followed by Carol Myers. My name is Catherine Maddox, a community advocate. My name is Catherine Maddox, a community advocate for Protect the Vote GA, but tonight I'm speaking as a concerned member of this state, and my feedback to this body is my own. Like our own physical bodies, I use the term body to describe those charged with redistricting our state during this moment in time. Because much like our own dynamic and complex bodies, we do not expect you to be perfect, but we do expect you to be perfectly fair. The actions of the majority party in our state legislature, from the establishment of a committee on election integrity, when the security of their seats were threatened by the actual integrity of their constituents, to their refusal to conduct either a racial or a physical fiscal analysis on a now federally contested voter suppression bill they rushed through both chambers, are like those of children behind the trench coat, stacked on one another's shoulders, trying to seem tall. With the particularly Napoleonic nature of stripping voting certification, from the Secretary of State and granting it to themselves, it would seem the GOP is not interested in governing at all, but rather in total control. Considering the lack of transparency in this redistricting process, as well as the total disregard for people with disabilities and for people who speak any language other than English, I've come here today to remind those who would repress the vote and not to include us all, that you are not elected to exclusively represent yourselves. The Heritage Foundation may fund all of the racist policy they want, and the Supreme Court may decimate the Voting Rights Act to dust, but the people of Georgia are done watching black voters be disenfranchised or otherwise brutalized by the state in any fashion. The people will not stand for it. You are elected to be vessels for the voice of the people. And perhaps the time has come for the legislature to regain that focus and to rely on a politically independent redistricting commission, lest the people pay the price for your partisanship. But today it is the legislature's job to do the right thing, bearing in mind that census figures cannot be finessed into Trumpian propaganda and that according to the ACLU's latest breakdown of the current census, Athens, like the rest of Georgia, is growing more diverse every year. I urge those of you who have not legislated accordingly to rectify your wrongs in this redistricting processes. 
People's lives depend on it. Hello, my name is Carol Myers. Um, I live here in Athens, Georgia. Um, I've been here since 1984 and spent my career teaching and working as dean here at Athens Technical College. I welcome all of you here. Thank you for being here, and I thank all of my uh, fellow Athenians and Georgians for speaking up tonight. I'm a county commissioner now in my retirement, uh, representing District 8 on the east side of Athens. A month ago, I attended a leadership institute run by the County Government Association of Georgia. During that training, we had to identify three values that represented who we were as commissioners. Mine were service, equity, and integrity. Tonight, I urge you to embrace those values as you withdraw, redraw political districts in Georgia. Remember that behind your work is your service to the citizens of Georgia to create a structure, a non-gerrymandered structure that enhances the democracy that governs our state. Equity means that your goal is to create districts that give voice to all Georgians, no matter their political party, their race, ethnicity, religion, gender, and more. Integrity means that you will emphasize fairness, justice, transparency, and honesty in both the work and the product of the redistricting, redistricting process. Ten years ago, districts were, or ten or more, I can't, didn't look that one up, districts were created that basically drew state senate and representative districts here in Athens, as well as, of course, our congressional district that leave me, as well as over 70% of Athenians who vote as Democrats unrepresented in the state capitol and in Congress in Washington. Each December, my fellow, fellow nine commissioners and mayor, all Democrats and progressives, meet with our five state representatives, three in the assembly, two in the Senate. We share with them local legislation uh, issues that we would like them to address on the state level. Four of our five representatives are Republicans. For the most part, they do not advance the legislation that we ask them to represent, and sometimes even put forth legislation that runs counter to the, the will of the local government. If I had been, if I had run for office 20 years ago, I would be represented now by three Democrats in the state. Um, government. Um, right now, I just end by urging you to give Athens back a voice in Atlanta and in Congress as well. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Myers. Zachary Perry, followed by John Olive. How are y'all doing? Uh, thank you all so much for coming out here. For those of you who was a shorter drive, for those of you who might have been a longer drive, I do appreciate it. I also appreciate members of the public coming out, for those who are speaking as well as who are choosing not to. Uh, I'd like to start first off by thank you. taking a slight issue with uh, something my friend Adam here said, saying we all have the right to partisan gerrymandering. Uh, lower courts have actually said that partisan gerrymandering is a violation of equal protection. Uh, British show the Common Cause just said that it's not just a political question that the courts aren't going to get into. So you don't have the right to do it, but you do have the ability. <laughs> so, uh, you do have that ability, and I'm here to tell you why you probably shouldn't do it. Um, I'm going to ask you to listen to myself and the other speakers here, as well as the news have spoken across the state. So the first reason is partial gerrymandering often as it's found in the state of Georgia, leads to bad governance. Um, I am, have lived in Athens for seven years, um, but I am from Harrison County. Harrison County is a very rural part of Georgia, and I recognize that the interests of Harrison County are significantly different than the interests of Athens Park County. Um, but if you have a representative, like our congressional representative that represents both, there is a conflict. Um, I also ran for uh, City District 46, Senator Gasser, I'm really sorry that you're bearing the blame of all of these comments, but <laughs> here we are. So, it's a good representation of districts where the constituents are often conflicting and have conflicting interests. So, if you have rural districts or rural court precincts, 
those constituents are going to have often conflicting interests with urban areas. Uh, the goal of partition and the goal of drawing these district lines is that both of those voices are heard and debated and the issues are brought accordingly. Now what we have is districts that are robbing those urban voters of their voice to have their concerns heard, to have their needs met, and to have those issues debated about. So when you see this, uh, Commissioner Myers mentioned that twice a year, the local commission will ask local legislators to come out and give them a wish list of things they would like to see in session. The vast majority of the time these wish lists are presented, local representatives often don't show up. And that's because most of them don't need to. They don't need the votes of Athens. Uh, during a campaign, during past campaigns, local Republican representatives don't show up to speaking events in Athens because they don't need to. They don't listen to us, they don't need to listen to us because they're based outside of Athens. Um, that is robbing them of the opportunity to hear our concerns, whether they agree with us or disagree with us. As constituents, we still have the right to be heard. And that right is not being exercised because they have no reason to do so. So I want to wrap up and um, say thank you again for coming out. Thank you again for giving us this opportunity to be heard. And I want to express um, a measure of hope. I hope that this is not a performative exercise. That this is not something that you are doing so that you can point to it later and say, look, we listen to y'all. And then do what you plan on doing the entire time. Uh, following Richard sure becomes cause, myself and many other Georgians kind of relegated ourselves to the inevitability that our districts were, were going to be chopped. Uh, and we are voices will be heard. So it's my hope that you take into consideration what you've heard here, what you're hearing across the state, and you prove us wrong. And you give the voters of this state the voices that they deserve, and under the Constitution, they do have the right to. Thank you. Thank you, Gary John Olive. Uh, good evening. Members of the committees and the audience. My name is John Ive. I'm an emeritus professor of mathematics education from the University of Georgia. I'm also an immigrant uh, to the USA. I emigrated in 1975, came to Georgia. <laughs> and I've lived in Athens, Clark County, since 1986. That's 35 years. Um, I became a citizen of the United States in 1995, so that I could participate in the democratic process in this country. I was being taxed as an immigrant, and I thought I should get some representation. <laughs> really, I was here to say everything that's already been said. <laughs> so I'll, 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 I'll cut it uh, very short. Um, when I first voted in this county, I was voting for people who represented my community. They were part of the community. They lived in this community. And they represented our values. That is not the case now, except for two years ago, when we had special elections, and I could again vote for two people who lived in my community and had shared my values. Those, of course, had big targets put on their back and were randomly defeated in the next election. Um, <coughs> I, as a mathematics educator, I wanted to point out some numbers that really do point to where Athens Rock County is. It was a metropolitan urban district. And the state house districts for equal, um, uh, in your desire to get uh, equal representation, equal numbers, calls for 59,511 in each of the house districts. That's a nice number because Athens Park County has just over 120,000. <laughs> and it makes a lot of sense for that to be two house districts instead of three house districts that are combined with majority um, rural and republican areas. So please, do the math 
and make this again representing a community of interest, which has been everyone has talked about as being one of the most uh, important aspects of leaders. Give the community a voice. Thank you. Christian Dent, and then Nella Farrell. Hi, my name is Peter Holt. I'm a uh, retired uh, research scientist with the USDA and a resident of uh, Winterville as well as Clark County. With the upcoming redistricting process, I would like to provide input on the decision making requiring voting district lines. I find it interesting that in the previous day, Brian Bryant in 2011, Clark County, the smallest county in Georgia, essentially, essentially got cut in half with regards to congressional and state senate districts, and in thirds with regards to state house districts. This, in fact, has diluted the role of voters in this county in the multiple districts, and that's in science and what voices the citizens of Clark County would have in selecting their representatives and in how their government should work. Now, I know the previous redistricting has been held hostage by the particular party in power, whether it be Republican or Democrat. Our state deserves better and needs to change. An independent committee needs to be formed, which creates districts as free from political bias as possible, and decisions made are open and transparent. Plus, final maps should be made available to the public with sufficient time to allow for evaluation and comment. We'll stop this every 10 year later with that and give the Georgia voters one voice in the political process. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Holt. Christian Dent, please. Hello, my name is Christian Dent. Uh, I'm a Redding High School senior in Henry County, just south of Atlanta. And I currently serve as the 77th Youth Governor of the state of Georgia, elected by over 300 Georgia high schools under the Georgia Center for Civic Engagement, formerly affiliated with the Georgia State White Club. I represent collectively the interests and voices of Georgia youth and high schoolers, and one thing is clear, that we are engaged. And I think we can all see that uh, by tonight's hearing. Uh, we're engaged in our government, our political process, and our communities. As young people, we've contributed significantly to the recent political shifts in Georgia that our interests deserve to be heard. With all due respect to this committee, I find it redundant that the same politicians who were for these seats in 2022 are now uh, in turn drawing their own districts and picking their own voters uh, in the process of gerrymandering and splitting up communities of interest for political power. I appreciate both Chairman Kennedy and Chairwoman Rich's apparent concern and desire to hear from Georgia citizens on their interests and community needs pertaining to redistricting. But Georgians deserve more than a mic to plead with politicians to not gerrymander our districts. What the citizens of Georgia really need is structural redistricting reform, not simply to be listened to without action. An independent redistricting commission or citizens commission is direly needed as a nonpartisan and fair way to draw districts in Georgia, free from corrupt political power grabs and personal interests. Eight states, both liberal and conservative, already have implemented and redistricting processes completely separate from the state legislature, as it should be. Unfortunately, Georgia citizens cannot get resolutions on the ballot simply by collecting signatures, uh, as in other states. So the power is in the state legislature's hands. In 2019, House Resolution six, uh, excuse me, 369 and Senate Resolution 52 were introduced to the committee to bring about nonpartisan redistricting. But Chairman Senator Matt Brass didn't even bring it up for a committee vote. It's time to stop worrying about your next elections and bring about structural nonpartisan redistricting reform for all of our citizens, regardless of political affiliation. Democrats did it in 2001, Republicans did it in 2011, and are, we're about to witness them do it again. So I think Jordans can all agree that we're fed up with gerrymandering. Thank you very much. Hello, my name is Emma Farrell, 
and I'm a current resident of Athens, Clark County, as well as, student, as a student at the University of Georgia. The city of Athens is a special place that means so much to so many people. However, the people that call the city home have been disadvantaged by their government. Communities have been denied fair representation as a result of partisan divisions in districting. As it comes time for legislature, legislators to consider and redraw the state's districts, determine the totality of representation, I implore them to keep communities together so that they may effectively be served. Particularly in the face of shifting demographics, it's essential that the needs of the people be prioritized over the motives that may drive partisan gerrymandering. Despite that all this year, Athens Clark County has a 50, Athens Clark County's 50% poverty rate is the highest in the state of Georgia. One in four Athens children live in poverty. <coughs> Additionally, Athens Clark County falls behind the rest of Georgia on educational measures, including graduation, graduation rate, dropout rate, and test scores. Clearly, there are significant structural problems that affect this community. Residents lack proper representation, as Athens is currently divided into several districts splitting the city. This divide disallows effective and equitable representation in governments. The community of Athens deserves better. I ask legislators to consider the needs of the community as a whole rather than continuing with the current division. Athens deserves a unified district with a leader that knows and understands the needs of its residents. Thank you. Raised on St. Simon's, I saw systemic racism from a, as a small child, and I worried that our government is still based in systemic racism. Um, I am so shocked to find out that there is no transparency in the redistricting process that is done behind closed doors. There is no federal or state guidance. No rules. And I am concerned. I know the Democrats have done it. And I know that the GOP has done it. And I'm concerned that if it is not transparent, if it is not taken out of the shadows, we will never fix this. Thank you. Students like me at UGA and schools across our state are the future of Georgia. Yet in Athens and on UGA's campus, we are unable to advocate for ourselves or our interests as students because we are divided between not two, but three state house districts and two state senate districts. The list of unique needs we have as students and residents in Athens is long, from access to public transit and sustainable practices to something as fundamental as funding for our schools. All of these issues are unique and means that we deserve representation. But as young people entering our democracy for the first time, gerrymandering teaches young people a much more destructive lesson. When young people's voices and their first forays into our political system are surgically undermined so that it's impossible for them to achieve meaningful representation, it erodes their faith that their voices matter. It undermines the very belief that holds our democracy together. Now, I drove up here all the way from Atlanta after getting back from a multi-day car trip from uh, you know, visiting my family because I know that the decisions that this community makes will determine how my classmates, how I and my classmates will be represented for the next decade. The decisions you all make on this honorable committee will determine whether I, as a young person, 
at one of our state's renowned public universities will be able to choose my representative or whether a state legislature will be able to choose me. As a student and on behalf of the rising generation of democratic citizens, I implore you all to assure that Athens and UGA have fair, continuous, and representative maps. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. You know, we all told you who we are. 
who we are? Why don't you take the time to tell us who you are? Can this lady speak first and answer this question? Which way? Yes, ma'am, did you sign up? I thought I signed up. Okay, then step forward. I'm sorry. If we missed you, I apologize. That's okay. Yes, ma'am. You have a mic. You have a uh, My name is Maura Zunina, and I'm a resident here of Athens. Uh, I've been here 19 years. I have never felt um, oppressed or in any which way felt that anybody has stopped me from voting. Uh, I ain't capable of getting a driver's license. Uh, no one really stops me from going to a restaurant. So uh, I feel like I fell on another planet today. Because actually, I have seen a couple of representatives come down and speak in Athens, and I have never seen any of these faces that are up here today. I spoke to the uh, representatives here one on one. I spoke to Mr. Hazard, uh, Houston Gaines. And it's been one on one. I have expressed my views countless, and they've been very nice, actually. So, uh, oftentimes I see on the newspaper that uh, these folks go to the rural areas to speak to people, when in fact, I heard them speak in a very small group here in downtown Athens, you know? So, I'm kind of surprised to hear that a lot of people are talking about these things, you know? So, Having spoken to them one on one, I, I do feel confident of their character when they actually go down the line. So I would say I, I, I'm not worried because I've spoken to them, so I know that they they are watching out for people. You know, they they probably will do the right thing, you know? So I'm not concerned about that. Uh, my kids grew up here in Athens as well, in public school. They actually go to the East Side schools, the bad side as well. A lot of you may know that uh, or see it like that. And um, they're also they're voting, they're in the voting age as well, 18 and 27 now. Um, and quite actually, in, in their schools, uh, you know, mainly uh, they pay minorities in the school. They have not gone to private schools or anything like that. And I've seen a lot of indoctrination rather than education in the schools, which concerns me a lot because. I feel that uh, a lot of the young people are not represented here. I mean, I see young people from colleges, but I don't see a lot of high school students here. Um, and that says a lot about our schools as well. But I, I do feel confident in that the representatives that are up there, and a couple of you I have seen before, that you will do the right decisions, you know, and that you do take people into consideration. As I said, I, I'm a female, I'm dark. I'm an immigrant. I fled Nicaragua with my family back in 1972 from a very oppressive government. My parents never had a safety net, never took welfare. They worked very hard to get to have all seven of their kids go to college. So I would say if you are concerned, the best thing to do is to meet and speak with these representatives when they do come to Athens. They will speak to you. And I find them very nice. Thank you very much, Mr. Kaiser. I feel that you have a lot of people who are very good at the job. Thank you. That concludes our testimony taking portion of this. Uh, we appreciate you being here. If you want to meet some folks up here, feel free to come on. We're actually past the 7 o'clock hour, so I want to be respectful of everyone's time here and in the audience who make plans around the time that we said this meeting will take place. But I'll ask the folks to stick around uh, that want to meet or uh, talk with any of you this evening. I want to thank Captain Spectre for the policy hosting us tonight.